Office FX. Hello there, this is Xiao, and welcome to the 12th episode of my 17 part series on getting a great vocal sound. This series is a crash course on best practices you need to know to get good results in a home recording environment, from performance to recording to mixing. The previous tutorial was all about digital audio workstations, mixing accessories, and how to make a home studio on a budget. If you haven't already seen this video, go check it out. Today, I'll show you how to prep your audio and your project for mixing. Now, I'd like to reiterate one quick point before I begin. Unless noted otherwise, you can use all of the tools and techniques that I show you in whatever DAW you have access to. You don't need to use the same same program as me. So grab your DAW and let's get started. Preparation. Welcome to FL Studio, my DAW of choice. Most of my future tutorials will take place in this program. So here we have a song project. It's got virtual instruments, synthesizers, drum samples, and a scratch vocal. Let's give it a listen. My favorite pizza topping our pepperoni, sausage, and bacon. My favorite pizza toppings are pepperoni, sausage, and bacon. I'm beginning to notice a pattern. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is project prep organizational stuff. You want to be doing this throughout the process, but it's especially important when it comes time to mix. First organizational tip, put similar tracks next to each other. Do this on both your track window and on your mixer. My track window is already pretty simple, but as you can see on my mixer, I've grouped all my drums next to each other. Same with my two accent instruments. That way I'm not jumping all over the place trying to find things. Next tip, labels. Not only should you have labels, because many DAWs don't necessarily come with default ones, but they should also describe what an instrument actually is. Like this track here, it says Hammond Organ Nuke. Now this is actually a super saw pad, so I'm going to label it super saw. And let's color it purple. Now, as you can see, I kind of went a little overboard. Not only did I label my tracks, but I also used icons and color coding to show what type of instruments they are. You don't have to do all that if you don't want to, but you should at the very least label your tracks so that you're not wasting mental effort trying to remember where everything is. Like, oh, where's my bass? Oh no, whatever shall I do? Oh wait, here it is. I know where it is because it's clearly labeled. Plus, labels are a huge help if you come back to a song many months after you finish it. Next thing, clean up. Remove any audio clips or plugins that you're not using. Like, I'm not using this ride symbol or these two synths down here. So I can just delete them. It saves CPU and reduces clutter. Another quick thing is to put up time markers on your track window so that you can clearly see each part of the song, like the verse, the chorus, the intro, stuff like that. This song is really short, so I don't have many. Last organizational tip, submixes. You want to route each of the tracks in your mix to a couple bus or group tracks so that you can control many instruments with a single fader. So for me, I have a submix for my drums, my pads, my basses, my rhythms, my leads, and my accents. You can group yours however you want. You also don't need a submix if you only have one instrument of a given type. Like these guys here aren't really necessary, but I just have them anyway. All these organizational things may seem kind of tedious, but they make your mixing process much more efficient by reducing the number of things you have to keep track of in your head. And if you end up using a particular setup a lot, you can actually save that as a template so that you have everything you need right off the bat. Huge time saver. Also, quick thing, if you can, try to save a backup of your project on a hard drive or in the cloud, just in case your DAW crashes. Quick reminder, save often. It makes a big difference. Okay, now that our mix is all organized, we're ready to start processing our vocal. So here are my three vocal recordings in FL Studio's Audio Editor plugin. I recorded them using the full take method at a fairly low volume level. However, 
As you can see from the waveform display, they're really quiet, so to fix that, I like to normalize my audio. This brings up the volume of the tracks to a more manageable level, so that I don't have to use massive gain boosts later on. So let's highlight it, Control A, and normalize. Ta-da! Now it is much louder. The other thing I like to do is noise removal. Most static noise removal plugins work in the same way. First, you highlight a portion of your audio that's just background noise. And then you capture a noise profile, like that. Then you highlight the entire audio file and run the noise removal tool. They generally have a threshold and an amount setting. The defaults generally work pretty well. They also usually have a preview button down here to see what it sounds like. Fiddle around with the amount setting if your audio starts to sound weird in the preview because that means that the noise removal is actually removing too much noise. And when it sounds good, hit the accept button and the noise remover will scan your audio, look for frequencies you specified in the noise profile, and reduce them by a certain amount. See, the background noise, the purple stuff back here, just got a lot darker. Now be careful with noise removal. You should only ever apply it once to your audio. Any more than that and you end up cutting out too many frequencies, which makes your vocal sound strange. Also, many DAWs don't actually have an audio editor. If that's the case, you can always just do this using Audacity, because everyone can access that. However, normalization and noise removal aren't strictly necessary unless you're recording in a room that has a loud, constant background noise, like a fan or an air conditioner. So once your files have been processed, you can place them in your project. When you do, make sure they're all starting at the same point. So let me just drop them in. Boop, and boop, and boop. There we go. And now for the fun part, editing your audio. If you recorded using the redo method that I described in part 9 of this series, that just means going through your recording, cutting out the bad bits, and lining up everything so that it flows properly. But if you're working on a song like we're doing here, you have to do something called comping, where you go through your three takes plus the scratch vocal and edit them together to make one vocal track. The most efficient way I've found to do this is to listen to each track all the way through, with the other ones muted of course, in the context of the song and see which one sounds the best overall. That one will be your main take. Then you go through and find the spots in your main take that aren't as good and listen to your other takes in those spots to see which ones sound better. Once you've found the one that works, edit out the bad part from your main take and replace it with the good part from the other take. After you've replaced the bad parts, remove the pieces of the vocal that you're not using because they're just taking up space. So I'm just gonna go through here and comp this real quick. Actually, this second take here sounds pretty good by itself, so I'm not actually going to mess around with it. But basically, if you recorded your takes properly, they should all sound similar enough that they would seem like one seamless take. Now make sure your vocal takes are all being routed through the same mixer track. My favorite pizza toppings. And there you go. Your vocal is now ready for mixing. So how do you judge whether a part is good? That comes down to knowing what you can and can't fix using your mixing tools. You can fix problems with timing, volume, frequency balance, sibilance, and even singing out of tune. You can't fix clipping, sudden noises that happen during a spoken word, bad room sound, speaking mistakes, or worst of all, an unenthusiastic performance. Listen for parts of your main take that have problems you can't fix and replace them with parts that don't have those problems. If if you comp your vocal takes and you still have problems you can't fix, you either have to re-record the problem spots, completely remove them, or find some way to cover them up, which might not always work. Audio editing will definitely be much easier if you get your recording right at the source. Anyway, that's about it for this tutorial. If you liked what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want more information or have any questions about mixing and audio prep, leave a comment. I'm always open for questions. And if you'd like to request a VoxFX tutorial, please send me a message. Remember, if it's talky, I can talk about it next time. I'll talk about the two most fundamental concepts of mixing, levels and panning, and how they relate to vocals. Until then, have fun and keep making sound. Box FX. Box FX.
Thank you.